Years ago, I was kind of bored one night, so I started reading the paper. And right smack in the middle of the front page was an article about the local volunteer ambulance service. It said, space age technology coupled with advanced training and modern organization was being applied to saving life and limb on the highway, in the home, and in the factory. If you're interested in saving lives, come Monday evening at 7.30. Well, I ran right down there. In the bays was two square white ambulances. Each had 47 red lights and the words Mobile Intensive Care Unit painted on them. In the next room, the EMTs with their orange jackets all covered with patches and insignias was having a meeting. They was yelling and arguing and voting. I sure was impressed by how much they seemed to care about their life-saving work. I must admit I was a mite disappointed when I found out they was discussing the food for the annual picnic. After I made out the application form in triplicate, the membership chairman asked me why I wanted to join. I said, I want to ameliorate pain and suffering, intervene in situations with threatened life and limb, and provide high levels of emergency care in order to reduce morbidity and mortality. He said, son, son, that's fine, but can you lift? I was accepted as a probationary member, and I enrolled in an EMT class. As well as the orange AAOS textbook, I read Harrison's Principles of Internal Medicine, Gray's Anatomy, Tabor's Cyclopedic Medical Dictionary, Modern Critical Care Practices for the Emergency Department Physician, Three Years Back Issues of the Annals of Emergency Medicine, and every issue of the EMT Journal that has ever been published. Our first test only had one question on it. In a complete, well-organized paper explained shock. Well, I thought for a minute, it not being an easy question, and then I wrote, An all-encompassing definition of shock is elusive since its varying forms represent extremely complex pathophysiological chemical processes. Simply stated, shock commences when there is insufficient cardiac output and hypotension caused either by impaired cardiac function or by reduced venous return resulting from hypovolemia or relative hypovolemia. I went on to explain, the presenting clinical picture, vasovega dilation, the neurohumeral defense mechanisms, orthostatic hypotension, and the latest studies regarding the development of shock sequelae in the traumatized patient. The next night after class, the course instructor said, Son, son, don't you ever hand in 17 pages of no-nonsense like that again. Do you take me for some fool? There's no room for a smart guy in my class. I guess he was right because I sure had a problem with the state written exam. Half the multiple choice questions didn't have the right answer as one of the choices. Because I'd had experience in government work, I got most of them anyhow. I just picked the answer someone who didn't know much about physiology, pathophysiology, or current practices in emergency care would think was right. Well, finally I passed the course and became a full active member of the squad. I got one orange jacket, twelve assorted patches, two chrome collar pins, one genuine plastic name tag, one wallet sized ID card, an eight and a half by eleven state certificate suitable for framing, one pager and every Friday, Saturday and Sunday night on the call up roster. The president of our association also assigned me a special executive function. I was put in charge of straightening out stock and cleaning up and washing both ambulances. Well, I learned a lot in my first 10 years as an EMT, both about emergency care and about straightening out stock and cleaning up and washing ambulances. Our squad meetings are Monday evenings. The advanced trauma class meets Tuesday and Thursday nights, and I'm still on the call-up roster every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. But to make sure I was involved enough in the squad, and because I was the only one available on Wednesday evenings, the executive council put me on the training committee. At my first meeting, they was discussing the problems on CPR calls. After listening for a while, I said, The rise in back pressure in the last third of the inspiratory phase commonly causes a loss of mass seal, resulting in inadequate ventilation. The resulting respiratory acidosis and poor blood oxygen levels, combined with the limited circulation provided by external chest compressions, impact poorly on salvageability. 
to avoid dependence upon the need of maintenance of a proper mask seal, we should train our personnel in the techniques of visualized orotracheal intubation for use with arrested patients. After all, no greater danger of unrecognized misplacement is associated with endotracheal intubation than with esophageal obturation. The squad's medical director rose to his feet. From under his jacket, he pulled out a three-foot caduceus and struck me repeatedly around the head and chest. He said, son, son, that's ridiculous. If we let you intubate, you might do someone some harm. After all, you're not a doctor. I pointed out that without proper ventilation, death was a certainty, and there's no harm worse than the harm caused by death. I guess my logic won him over, because on his recommendation, I was immediately appointed to the state EMS council, which coincidentally met Wednesday evenings 85 miles away. Well, it's been five years since that training committee meeting. I'm on eight local, regional, state, and national committees, and attend 20-some meetings every month. I must tell you I've never seen any trauma or insult on the streets or ED that even mildly holds a light to the fighting and bloodshed that goes on at every single EMS meeting. Attending these meetings, I've found another meaning for the letters EMT. They also stand for Extraordinary Masochistic Tendencies. Now, I don't want to leave you with the wrong idea. I wouldn't trade being a certified EMT or my membership in the National Association of EMTs for nothing in the world. Why, just last month at the annual banquet, right after the Fresh Fruit Supreme and the Cold Prime Ribs, Peas and Mashed Potatoes, I received an award. Even though it still gets me all choked up, I'd like to share the inscription with you. It says, son. Presented for 15 years of ameliorating pain and suffering, intervening in situations which threaten life and limb, and providing high levels of emergency care in order to reduce morbidity and mortality every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. And for straightening out stock and cleaning up and washing both ambulances all these years.